What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. I am Anthony Bronner and on today's video we're back to work on Hookers and Blow, our 1946 Chevy. And this is part number six of the build on this truck. And in this video we're going to be finishing up all that custom sheet metal work back there in the cab. Well, since I seen you guys last, I went ahead and fit the panels, got those to where they were ready to go in. I also did a little bit of bracing on the main structure of the cab, and I made some spacers to go in there in that mounting area on that second bolt hole back that actually has the bolt go through the floor pan, so that I would be ready to actually put the panels in. I already got two of them in on the other side. I had video of all that stuff for you guys, but I, my phone overheated because it's like 104 degrees outside, and I guess I lost that footage or something. So. I guess all I can do now is just kind of flip the camera around and show you a little bit of what I still can show you. And then I'm going to get to work and finish this stuff up. All right, so for some bracing in here, I've added some square tubing into this area right here. These panels in here and all of this right here basically just went together with some screws. So kind of felt like it needed a little bit more support there and maybe welded. So I went ahead and welded this seam down there, I welded down all through here and I welded a bunch of stuff behind the square tubing and then I added that square tubing in there to make all that a little bit more rigid. And then went up in there and, well, can't see it anyways. Did some more welding up there too. Now, long story short, I had to make that spacer right here to be able to space this up from there to the bottom of the floor so that we could put a bolt through here and actually have something to sandwich against and tighten the cab down on. Also, when I did that, I made this hole that it is sitting on bigger. I had to lift the cab up, do a drill through there to be able to make that big enough for this pipe to go through. And I had that come all the way down and actually touch the plate, which makes up some of that gap there that's like the size of my finger. So that actually takes care of that mount. Now at this point, I still have to do something up there with that one to space it up off this plate on the frame and then of course the back. But for right now, I've got that part taken care of. I went ahead and notched the panel here to be able to fit all along the side of the cab here and there's a little bit of a notch up there makes that panel fit pretty good not too bad once i get everything kind of starting to tack and put it into place it'll be great and then of course we've got our side panels there that'll go in there on the kick panel over there just like that one did on that side kind of see over there how it looks after it's together I did go ahead and put well even underneath here and all of this area back here I did head went ahead and put some weld through primer this stuff was kind of starting to get a little bit of rusty spots here and there from when Connor blasted it so went ahead and just covered it up with that because I am going to be doing some welding and stuff in here and then when I'm welding it I don't have to worry about anything not having weld through primer on it I guess that pretty much catches you up for now, so let's go ahead and get some work done. Okay, so for you guys, that was just a few seconds. For me, it's actually a whole nother day because that took the better part of my whole day yesterday to be able to get that all welded up and ground down. But the panels are in now, they're fitting great, and it's pretty much all welded up. So we can move on to the hump. I actually have started getting a piece of metal to go over that transmission already, so let me grab that and I'll show you what I got going on there and we'll go ahead and get it fitted up in the rest of the way. So at this point, I've just taken a measurement of what I'm gonna need for metal to be able to go over the tranny and back down to the other floorboard and then i have taken and added a little bit to that so that i would make sure that i have enough added i think about three inches to it or so so that should cover me and be pretty safe hopefully so then i took the metal i cut it all down and i just rolled it right over a piece of pipe that i have it's a 10 inch pipe it works out pretty good for transmissions like this to be use a 10 inch you can see that it kind of opened back up and it's not 10 inches it actually ends up being about 16 or something like that or whatever so anyways long story short there that part is done 
I've got that uh, sitting up there now on a piece of wood. That's what that little piece of wood right there is on top of the tranny. That gives me about an inch and a half, two inches spacing from the tunnel to the transmission. So gives us some clearance there. And I've started fitting it up in here. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in and then I'll show you guys kind of my procedure of being able to fit something like this. So my biggest goal at this point is to go ahead and get this back piece right here fitting good and flush up here against the seat base. Now this part right here you can see it's a little bit janky but I can push that down and kind of get that all in position when it comes time to actually weld that. So we're not going to be worried about that particular part and up through here we're going to worry about all of that fitment when we come when it comes time to go ahead and do the one and going over the top part up there. So that'll all be good. So right now what I'm working with is I've got this notch right here in this and this punch right here is basically my extra that I figured from the beginning and this is close to where the floor line is going to end up being right there. There's a cross member right here that's underneath the seat base that I'm trying to fit this up against. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this into place and then we can see how far we got and I'll show you how to trim this down to match this up and make it fit real nice. All right, so with it in there, you can see it's actually starting to fit pretty decent, but I still have a pretty good size gap here. I get my finger in there, so got to do something with that. And yes, these welds look terrible. It's sheet metal, so they usually don't look good anyways, but this had like some kind of, I don't know, galvanized coating or something on it. It was weird. It was not welding good at all, so that was a mess. But moving on, I've got that gap still, so we've got to do something with that. So I usually use this big set of dividers right there, and instead of having like dicom and stuff all over everything and then trying to scribe on it i've just cheated i've just stuck a marker on there so the way this works is you kind of open it up till you got to about the same size as the gap and then you just start at the top and work your way down see if i can do this with two with one hand and then as that traces that down there that gives you a perfect match of what you need now I've got to mark that on the other side because if we're doing one side, we've got to do the other. And then I've got to connect the two so I can get a line of where we need to cut. I'm not going to cut that whole thing all at once. I am going to kind of creep up on it. I'll probably do like half, fit it again, double check everything, and then move on and try to get a little closer to our line. So let me do some trimming and we'll see what we got. <music> Okay, we're getting really close here. Now, we don't have a gap here big enough to get my finger in there anymore, but there is still a gap, so I want to take care of that. And I have not notched for these little beads that's in the seat base thing yet. So, when I did that, it didn't quite line up right when I looked at it on my second go. So, that's one of the reasons why you creep up on stuff, just to make sure that things are going to be okay. So, I think to mark that, I'm going to do that with my marker. I've always got one of these in my pocket. And that's actually the reason why that one is red, because I know that one was from the scribe that I did before. This black will let me know that this is a different marking and that this is the one that I'm going to instead of the red. If they were all black or all red, then that wouldn't work so well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that same routine again. And hopefully this will mark where our humps are here on this base a little better. We do that to the other side, we'll cut it and fit it one more time. All right, I got that fitting pretty good. I'm happy with that. There's a little tiny gap there in a couple spots about the thickness of the sheet metal itself, so not bad at all. I'm gonna go ahead and weld that, tack that all in, and then I'm gonna go over here and start working on some of this waviness here, get that all out to where that's all flat, and then we can move on to doing something over the bell housing and cover that up, and then we'll be done. all welded. Let me turn the welder off. I'll show you guys what it looks like now. New metal welds way better than the old stuff. Get that all in there. Got this all flattened out at the same time. 
All right, left the hardest piece for last, so I guess I'll get started on that. I don't need these for a minute. It's freaking hot already. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay, same as last time. Guess my size all out. I took this piece, I rolled it over the same piece of tube that I rolled this piece over. And now with it sitting up here, I can start trimming off some pieces and start to get it to where it's in the right shape. This is going to be my first cut. Obviously nowhere close to where I need to be, but that's going to start to allow it to come down a little bit. And hopefully then I can start pushing it forward. Well, that dropped that whole panel down quite a bit, closed up the gap a lot. I need to take some sort of a notch like this out of this corner over here so that we can drop this down and start to fit around this weird little hump thing going on there. So that's what's next. I went ahead and made the notches on the sides and then I took a little bit here off this on both sides and man, that thing almost falls right into place. I could probably weld that if I wanted to. There's a little bit more of a gap here than I'd like though. I could all but get the end of my finger in there and it's about the same up here. So if I go ahead and take out a little bit more here on each side, I think I'll be able to close that all the way up and it'll be good to go. Well, that looks plenty good enough. I think we're ready to weld it. All right, I got it all welded up. I actually even ground it down some now. So I am ready to take it to the next level. There is some little spots here where you can still see where the weld was and all of that. I could totally take and weld some more of that up and then grind it all down some more and you would not see any of that at all. There would be no need for any filler or anything. You could just prime over it and go. But I don't want to put that much time and energy into this thing because we are talking about a rat rod truck here. So I think what I'm going to do just to clean it up a little bit more and take it to the next level where we can kind of smooth everything out get it ready for some paint and some coatings is to just go ahead and fill some of this stuff through here with some all metal. Let me show you guys what that is. All right, so this is actually metal to metal, not all metal. Different brand, basically the same thing though. You guys see that there? All it is is it's a metal reinforced body filler basically. And what that does is that actually gives you a body filler that's not going to suck in the moisture and everything like it would if you were using a regular body filler just for doing regular body work. So if I do have any little spots left at all, and I'm like 98% there, I'm pretty sure of, if not 99%, that everything is all welded. But if there is a little tiny spot left or anything like that, this will fill that in and I don't have to worry about a bunch of moisture coming in there and everything and it's starting to rot everything all out. I am going to put this on the top and then on the bottom side I am going to undercoat or something everything underneath there as well so very very unlikely that I'm gonna have any moisture even hit this to begin with but just in the off chance it does this will be better than regular body filler plus it's a little bit stronger in my opinion so like on the edges like this right here where I'm getting in and out all the time and everything I'm less likely to actually pop some of that off there's so very little there anyways it's not gonna be a big deal but just makes me feel a little bit better to have this rather than regular body filler so I'm going to go ahead and put this on and sand some of it off and I'll skip you all the boring stuff there and just flash you to it being done. So give me a second. Well, that's going to be good enough for now. I'm done doing it. It's like 105 in the shop. Got here four in the morning and it's now like almost five in the evening. So. I'm toast. It's time to go home, but I'll show you guys what this looks like real quick. But before I do though, I want to go ahead and give another deserving YouTube channel a shout out. And for this one, I've got you the Cadillac Dan show. He's actually a subscriber to my channel and asked if I give him a shout out and I'm more than happy to. He messes with a bunch of low riders and stuff over there and doing some hydraulics and things. So if you guys are into that sort of thing, go over there and check out his channel and show him a little bit of love, hit that like and subscribe button. And I guess with that, I can show you guys what this looks like before I go. Now keep in mind that this is his first coat, so it definitely needs a little bit more done to it. And I'm gonna be doing more fab work in here. So there's no sense in really probably taking it any farther until everything else is done. But that gets us to a pretty good point now where I feel good about leaving it for a while. And I could probably even throw some primer on it if I wanted to, to keep things from rusting up. Now I can't do anything more back here because I don't know what I need for clearance on a drive shaft because I don't have a rear end in it yet. So once I get the rear end in, then I can finish that last little bit of a tunnel right up through there. That's going to be a pretty quick, easy deal. We're pretty close to getting to where we can have the rear end in here. And check this out. Pick that bad boy up. Let me go ahead and shut the door here. So anybody that's stuck around this long gets a sneak peek. Oh, cord's in the door. 
Oh well, it'll be all right. Sneak peek of what the back of this thing is gonna look like with the semi wheels on there. These are a super low pro 22.5. I think they're a 255.70. So that's pretty low for even a low pro tire. So I think that's gonna look really good on the back of this thing. We get some more aluminum Alcoas on the front and this thing will just be popping. So I'm excited to get to that point and we're gonna be there pretty quick. So keep an eye out for the next video, but that's all I got for you guys on this one. So I'll see you next time.